company from South Korea, long time ago, more than 20 years ago. We didn't have much money, so we gotta make a living. Oh, I didn't like the cooking. <laughs> I still don't like cooking that much. <laughs> I like to see them enjoying the food and just be happy when they see the plate. Just be happy, go. Oh, that makes me happy. The hardest working people, but they were so kind and loving at all times. Always a big smile, always a big hello. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank you. And more than just remembering you, she'd put a smiley face through a little thing of whatever you're wearing that day on your plate, love to have you here, that kind of thing. Not only that, she would remember the order. She would say, <laughs> oh, you like fried onions, right? Yeah. <laughs> and no mayonnaise, no mayonnaise. One day, this customer came in with his friend. He go, Sonia, Sonia, my friend's birthday today. So I just want to do a little special. I start drawing like a little cake and stuff like that. And then his friend was very happy when they see the plate, go, oh, okay. They were being forced to, to leave, and they were losing their lease. Janice and I and a couple of others founded the Burger Brigade. We created the website where you could click on it and send a letter to one of the people at City Hall. We sold the t-shirts, we had petitions, we went to meetings. For nine years. It was actually a lot of work. It, it was a, a lot, lot of, of work. Two former owners of this property wanted to level the whole thing. It meant nothing to them. It meant a lot to us. This is what was created after World War II when the GIs came home and they opened up a garage with a little stand and anybody could go walk up and get a burger. And it says so much about our culture in the United States. The walk-up hamburger stand, they're slowly by slowly becoming demolished and it's going to be a part of lost America. And uh, that was one of the last ones. I mean, Janice Joplin used to sit near the stools right here. She used to sit in there and used to sit right over here. Jimi Hendrix used to come here. Jim Morrison lived around the corner. Linda he Ronstadt, she filmed one of her covers here. Yeah, it's, it's just a really, really cool place. Look at that sign up there. We got it designated for a bunch of effort. Uh, historical landmarks that will never be taken down. I thought it'd be one, but I didn't know another problem is waiting for me. We could save the building, not the business. The building became a history building. But I, I'm not attached to the building, so my landlord doesn't give me any more lease, so I couldn't stay. So, yeah, it was really difficult. It became harder and harder for us to find the kind of support that they needed to negotiate on their behalf. Yeah. And, and so, at a certain point, there was, there was just no alternative. miracle happened. My customers, he asked me if I need any money to move. <gasps> yes, I didn't want to ask, you know. Well, he asked me, do you need any money? Yes, I do. Would you please? So he gave me a big chunk of money and I have a little bit. And other customers are helping with the Indiegogo website, like a fundraising. With their support, I wouldn't be able to get this place. So I'm very happy. <laughs> It's just a miracle this close by, you know, three blocks away. Hey! That's right! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that. It's still a thing of beauty. Isn't it gorgeous? Mm. They are amazing people. Yeah, they are all my loyal VIP customers. You know, that really helps. Even really. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to stay here until in this neighborhood. Just goes to show you the little people do have a voice. Yep. And a tummy. Uh, yeah. <laughs>